Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak with GMS Saints of the Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the spirit, I want to get into a lesson going into how this is Esau's last reign. Okay. Now, when I say Esau, I'm speaking of uh, who the world calls uh, the so-called white man, okay? Pursuant to the scriptures, okay? His uh, biblical nationality is the Edomites, okay? The nation of Edom, which we identify as the so-called white man, okay? Now, this message is to the sincere members of the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel, pursuant to the scriptures, Okay, which today can be identified as you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. Now, we do understand because we were scattered as a people for breaking the covenant that was given to our nation, we are going to come back into the fold in these last days looking like the other nations and speaking the language of the countries where we were scattered. Okay, so this thing isn't about uh, a physical appearance. Okay, even we here ourselves speaking pri uh, primarily the members of Great Millstone, don't identify ourselves as black Hebrew Israelites as the world likes to call us, okay? In our mind, that's another derogatory term, another proverb and byword. We are the Hebrew Israelites according to the scriptures, okay? And this is a spiritual awakening that's taking place, all right? So with that being said, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the hopeful elect, especially in light of the, the recent events of uh, Donald Trump uh, winning the, uh, the the presidential election, okay, uh, for the Republican Party. So he's going to be the 47th president, uh, assuming he, he makes it to uh, the inauguration, which is uh, January 20th, because there's already been several attempts at his life, okay? So we don't know what's going to happen from now until then, but as it stands, Donald Trump, okay, uh, who we believe through the spirit to be uh, the Caesar Nero coming back, is, is going to be the next uh, leader of Babylon. Okay, and uh, with that being said, you got all these Edomites that are proud, and you got the, 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 the black woman, primarily the black woman, that is blaming the men of our nation that he got in office, okay? But you, you got a lot of things going on in the spirit, but the, the end all be all is that we are at the end of Esau's rulership, okay? And after all is said and done here in Babylon the Great, the nation of Israel is going to be set up to be the rulers of the planet in righteousness. And we are living in the midst of those times now. Okay, so we're going to begin the book of Proverbs 11, uh, verse 21. And it reads, Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Okay, and that's important to establish because there are three different classifications of men pursuant to the scriptures. You have the sons of God, which are the Israelites, okay, Yasharala, which in the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, the Holy Tongue translates as He Prince Power. He is a prince of the power. Okay, and if by uh, uh, by proxy, if you're a prince of the power, what does that make you? That makes you a son of God. Okay, so the the term Yasharala or Israel is a nomen nomen in of itself, and that represents the nation of Israel. Okay, twelve tribes, one nation. Okay, and then you have the sons of man, which are the other heathen nations. Okay, and you have the sons of the wicked, which are the Edomites. Okay, and here in Proverbs eleven twenty one, it says, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So though it seems like Esau Edom is going unpunished for all the atrocities that he's done throughout history, primarily to the nation of Israel. Okay, he's not going to go unpunished. He is not going to be in rulership forever. So he's trying to set himself up to be that, that supreme ruler, okay? That's not how it's written in the scriptures, okay? We're living in the last moments of, of Esau Edom's rulership, all right? It says, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So that's a clear distinction. It says, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous. Who are the seed of the righteous? Those are the Israelites, but it's, it's, it's specifying the seed, the seed of the righteous. So the seed, okay? 
So we're, we're separate from these other nations, set apart, which is when you go into the word holy, that's what it means to be set apart. The Israelites were set up to be a holy people, separate from these other nations. So it's clear that the wicked and the seed of the righteous are two opposing individuals, okay? The antagonist and the protagonist, if you will. The antagonist or the bad guy of this movie we call life being Esau Edom and the protagonist or the good guy being the Israelites. And as uh, uh, we have the script here, we know that Esau, Esau Edom is going to be taken down and the Israelites are going to be set up. So Israel's going to win at the end. And we are in the midst now of this so-called white man being taken down. We are living at the end of his last rulership, the end of his reign. All right, let's get a Habakkuk 2, beginning of verse 12. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, beginning of verse 12. It says, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establish a city by iniquity. Okay, and who has done that? That's been the MO of the so-called white man ever since he came to this country. Where he slaughtered the Native Americans that were here. Okay, the Tainos, the tribe of Gad, who came over to this country, right? When he went to the west coast of Africa and took the southern kingdom and shipped us over here through the transatlantic slave trade, here being Babylon the Great. Okay, what do the scriptures say? Uh, that uh, Israel and Judah were oppressed together. We are oppressed together here in Babylon the Great, but we are oppressed by the same nation. And it was by the the blood, sweat, and tears of both the northern and southern kingdom that built this country up to the greatness that it has now. Just as we did when we were in ancient Egypt and we built up the treasured cities of Egypt under the servitude of the Egyptians. Well, we are now coming back through the spirit in, 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 in new Egypt, the new house of bondage, which is America. Okay, and this place was established by the blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites. But the scriptures here in Habakkuk 2 and 12 is saying, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. So this town, this city, okay, this corporation that is Babylon the Great, we were sitting here as our punishment. And it was built with blood and established by iniquity. Okay? It says, Behold, it is not of the Lord, Yehovah Shemashah of hosts, that the people shall labor in the very fire. And the people shall weary themselves for very for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord Yahweh Shemashai as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. And that's exactly what happened to the nation of Israel. Okay, that proverbial wine, that proverbial drink that the scripture is talking about, are these are these different philosophies. Okay, and ideologies that were fed to our people and forced upon our people to the point where we forgot who we were. We forgot our cultures and our customs, even our nationality. Okay, but we're just now coming back into who we are through the spirit by the Rakakwa Dash, that proverbial breath of life that is being breathed back into those dry bones. Okay, and we're once again getting back our nationality and our culture, our names. Okay, the names of our tribe, the names of our power. This is what's taking place before your very eyes. It's, it's, it's prophetic that's taking place. But it's important to point out that the Lord hasn't, hasn't uh, forgotten the atrocities that Esau has done to the nation of Israel. Okay, and the Lord is bringing, up, bringing those things to light by the different precepts and the different lessons that brothers are doing. Exposing this so-called white man, lifting up his skirt so his shame can be seen. Okay, let's get uh, the book of Genesis 4 and 10. Because this uh, this hatred, this perpetual hatred that Esau has goes all the way back to the book of Genesis with the uh, the brothers Cain and Abel, okay, who came back through the spirit as uh, Esau and Jacob. Okay, they've always had this hatred for us. And it goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. All right, this is Genesis 4. Verse 10. Uh, let's see. Actually, I'll begin at verse 9. The headline reads, The Lord places a curse upon Cain. Okay, that curse uh, uh, on Cain being uh, the mark of leprosy. Because during this time, all nations were melanated. And as the scriptures uh, uh, detail in the book of Leviticus chapter 13, to have leprous skin or a lack of pigment with 
Blonde hair is considered a curse, which is true leprosy. Okay, according to the scriptures, not according to the definition that Esau uses to try to confuse us on what leprosy really is. Leprosy is really uh, vitiligo, if you will. Okay. Anyways, uh, this is uh, the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. It says, And the Lord Yehovah Shemashai said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Okay. As if you as if you could trick the Lord. Okay. The Lord knew, knew that you, you being the first murderer took your brother's life. That you killed him. Okay. He was the Lord was being facetious in a way by asking you where Abel was, but he already knew. Okay, the Lord knows in, in all things, and, and the angels see all things. Okay, but this is the spirit that's in Esau Enoch. Okay, the same spirit that said after he mourned his father that he was going to come after Jacob and kill him. Esau has the same spirit of Cain because they are the same spirit coming back. Okay. Uh, verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Okay. So, so the innocent blood that has been spilt cries unto the Lord for, for, for vengeance, for retribution. Okay. So think about all the innocent blood that has been spilt. I mean, true indeed, the scriptures say that no one has perished being innocent. Okay. But we have been murdered and killed. Okay. And, and our affliction has been furthered by Esau Edom. And that blood that has been spilt is crying out unto the Lord. Okay. So let's go all the way to the last book of the scriptures in Revelation. Chapter 6. And show you how all the scriptures tie together. Revelation 6 beginning at verse 9 which reads. And when he had opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they held, these being the righteous souls in the spirit world that were given the unction to teach. The prophets, they have a special place in the spirit world. Their spirits are, are it says, under the altar. Okay? So th this is a heavy lot that the prophets are in. Okay? The, the prophets were ordained unto this lot through the spirit. Okay? Verse 10, it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay? So they're crying out to the Lord, Lord, when are you going to avenge us for the blood that was spilled, that soaks into the land? Okay? This is very heavy. The, the, the Lord requires blood. Okay? Okay? Verse 11, it says, And the white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should as rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay? So even to this day, there are brothers that have been in the truth that have died doing the work. Okay? The scripture said there's going to come a time where that number is going to be fulfilled. And when that number is fulfilled, okay, the Lord is going to move on to the next uh, phase of prophecy. Just as we're waiting for that last member of the elect to be sealed in order for that destruction to be loosed. Okay, these are the times that we're in now. All right, but the Lord is getting ready to avenge the blood of his saints, which is the point. Okay, and let's get that in Numbers 35. Book of Numbers, chapter 35. Uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 35, beginning at verse 33, and it reads, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So when the land, or, or, or when the blood of the Israelites was, was, was spilt upon the land, that land cannot be cleansed unless the blood of the enemies is spilt on that same land. So you can imagine here in Babylon the Great, the different the, the, the blood and the different bones and, and, and the different cities that were built upon the foundation of the dead Israelites. This land is polluted. So it's no wonder that this place has to be destroyed. And it will be. 
Babylon the Great is going to be made a, a, a memorial in the kingdom to come, a, a desert, an example of what happens when you don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, continuing on, verse 34 says, Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, Yahweh Mashai, dwell among the children of Israel. So it's clear all throughout the scriptures, the Lord has reiterated time and time again that he, he's dealing with the nation of Israel. They are his chosen people. So imagine, okay, the, 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 the inward thought of those uh, that came against the children of Israel when they see that the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the world even calls Jesus, looks like the same people whom they persecuted all throughout history. Okay, the scriptures tell you that uh, uh, that they're going to stare at the strangeness of our salvation. Okay, and they're going to be uh, bewildered and perplexed by us being counted amongst the saints that us, being you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans, even though it be told them we're out there week in and week out with the 12 tribe sign. Okay, so it's not a secret. The word has gone out. All right, let's get Zechariah 2 and 3. Just to show you that the things I'm, I'm speaking about aren't just lip service. Okay, Zechariah 2 verse 3. Uh, let's see. Actually, 2 and 8. 2 and 8. Because when you go into Zechariah, the second chapter, the headline reads, The Lord will choose Jerusalem which is a Yasharalim, the city of peace. And we know through, through the spirit that we are a people before we're a place. So here's another scripture yet again, okay, that uh, uh, is reiterating how the Lord has chosen his people. Even when you go into the name Zechariah in the Hebrew, it's a Zechariah, okay, which means remembered of Yahweh. The Lord has not forgotten his people. So this is uh, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shemashai of hosts, uh, actually, you know what? I'll begin at verse 6. I'll begin at verse 6. In Zechariah 2, verse 6, it says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, Yehovah Shema Shai. Now, when it's saying flee from the land, that doesn't mean physically. That means spiritually, in your mind. Flee from this place, from the ideologies and the ways of this world and this, this system. Okay? Turn back to the old paths. Okay, that land of the north being uh, Babylon the Great, North America. It says, For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord Yahweh Shem Al Shai. Okay, that's that diaspora. Which is why I said in my opening statement, we're going to come back into the fold looking like these other nations because we were spread and scattered amongst these other nations. And what does Jake do when he goes to different lands? He procreates. That's why the scriptures say, You are the seed of your father. So if the spirit bears witness with you, regardless of what you look like, okay, through the seed line of your father, if it goes, if, if you go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you're an Israelite. We'll get our original look back when our bodies are changed upon Yahweh Shai's return. But as of right now, this is a spiritual awakening. Okay. Continuing on, verse 7, it says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, Zion in the Hebrew, to Zion, which means a monument or a memorial further showing the Lord's preference for his people above all other nations. Okay, did not the headline read above Zechariah the second chapter, the Lord will choose Jerusalem? He's going to choose his people? Verse 7, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. I'm going to show you that the Lord's people are going to be in Babylon the Great in the end times, and we are yet here in our captivity. Okay, verse 8, for thus saith the Lord, Yehobah Shemeshah of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye okay so the Lord's people are the apple of his eye you don't think he sees our plight and understands what we're going through the Lord is in control of everything and, and what we're doing is fulfilling prophecy fulfilling the things that were written alright now let's go into some of the uh reasons why Esau Edom is going to be judged the way he is because he's been given his chance to rule and look what he's done with that opportunity he's oppressed the Lord's people and damn near destroyed the earth this is Deuteronomy 19 and 14 okay and when you go to Deuteronomy the 14th chapter the headline reads laws about land boundaries and witnesses at trial but the point I want is the laws about the land okay 
it says uh, Deuteronomy 19 and 14 it says thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark which they of old time have set in thine inheritance which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord Yahweh shall have that power giveth thee to possess it okay and, and, and Esau Edom has came and he's removed all the landmarks that Israel had set up here in Azareth okay which is North America even in our homeland in Israel all the landmarks we've had where he's took taken that land and claimed it as his own as if he's the people right Esau Edom ha, has, has done this this is a, a major offense in the eyes of Yahweh by Shema Oshai let's get Micah 2 and 2 okay we're exposing this devil and we're bringing it out Micah 2 and 2 actually I'll begin at the top it says woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. The Lord gave them this power, but this is going to show you how wicked they are. When I say they, I'm talking about the Edomites as a nation, which is why they are going to be judged as a nation. Okay, they were given that title, that moniker, the wicked for a reason. Okay, verse two, they, and they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so that they oppress a man and his house even a man and his heritage okay this is the mo of esau edom to a t go you can go all throughout history and exactly what this scripture is explaining is exactly what this so-called white man has done to both tribes both the southern and the northern kingdom and that's without dispute because even in their own secular history they will tell you how, how, how they uh, claimed and took this land by force and by violence and by uh, by by damn near genocide. Okay, uh, let's get Psalms forty nine and eleven. I'm going to show you that all the, the prophets spoke the same thing concerning this so called white man, this devil. Okay, Psalms forty nine, verse eleven, which reads. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their land after their own names. Okay. And what's one of the most popular names they, they put on the nation of Israel, the, the, particularly the Southern Kingdom, which is the head tribe for the Judites, African-American. Well, well, Africa. Okay. Well, what, which country in Africa? Okay, that name originally comes from, from a Roman general, I believe, uh, 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 Leo Scipio Africanus. And in America, okay, how can we be two countries, Africa and America? Okay, America goes back to Amerigo Vespucci, so both those names go back to two Edomites, which is an oxymoron in and of itself, which, but it also goes back to the Proverbs and Bywords. As the scripture said, will be the curses that will befall our people, which is another clear indicator that we are exactly who we claim to be through the spirit. All right. Now, let's go on the Apocrypha in the book of Baruch, chapter three, verse two. Okay. In the Apocrypha, yes, which is canon, because the word Apocrypha means sent away. So it's like it's almost as if the Lord knew that Esau even would take this pivotal part out of the scriptures and try to hide it. Okay. Baruch chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. Okay. So this is going to show you that we are yet this day in our captivity, and we are continuing to cry out to the Lord. Okay. The Lord hasn't returned, Yahweh Shai. So how can those people in the land now say with confidence that they are the people when pursuing the prophecy? That can't be the case. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted this is to show that if we are yet this day in our captivity, well, what's the judgment for those that still that still at the man? And we can find that in Exodus 21. Okay, let's get that. Because we were clearly stolen as a people. Okay, even those that, that aren't religious can attest to that point. Because once again, it's, it's documented in, 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 this, in Esau Edom's own secular history. Let's get Exodus 21 and 16. 
which reads, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So if you steal a man and you're found out, you're, you're, the judgment is to be put to death. If you steal a man and sell him and you're found out, the judgment is you're going to be put to death. And both of these things happened to the nation of Israel. We were both stolen and we were both sold. And we are yet this day in our captivity, as it said in the book of Baruch. So when Yahweh Shai returns, he's going to return to a, to, to a place that is ruled by Esau Edom. Okay. Where the, the nation of Israel is currently okay under their servitude. We are in the land of our captivity. Okay. So it's all written here. The judgments. The nation of Esau Edom hasn't been done away with. That's not what uh, uh, the prophecy says. That's why we can say that for certainty. Okay, you don't have to take my word for it. Read Isaiah the 63rd chapter. The scriptures clearly say when Yahweh Shai returns, he's returning to a nation where Esau Edom is ruling. And if Yahweh Shai hasn't returned yet, that means the nation of Esau Edom is still in power. Plain and simple. That's why we love going to prophecy. Okay. Now I want to go back to the book of Baruch, chapter 2 and 30. And I want to just show you how this lines up through the spirit, showing you that the, the apocrypha is indeed spiritual and in, in canon because it coincides with the scriptures, with the doctrine that we teach. This is Baruch chapter 2, beginning at verse 30. And it reads. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Okay? And there's no one on this planet more stiff-necked than the Israelites. But in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. Okay? Even those that don't know the 100% doctrine, they at least know that they are Israelites. And that in of itself is a fulfillment of prophecy. Okay? It says... And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them in heart and ears to hear. That's going into the elect. The elect are going to have the mind and the ears to hear and to understand. It's going to be clear as day to them. They're not going to need much convincing. It's as, it's as if a, a black box in their, in their mind has been suddenly lit and they know the truth and there's nothing that you can tell them otherwise. That's the mindset that the hopeful elect are coming in. Okay. Continuing on, it says, And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Going to show you that there's going to be a specific group of men and women who wake up to the fact that they're Israelites and are, they're going to think upon the name of Yahweh Shemashai and praise that name. Okay? We're not going to be calling on Christ or calling on, on these other gods. We're going to be calling on the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son. Okay? Continuing on, it says, And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers with sin before the Lord. That's turning back to the old paths, putting off that old man, following the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our abilities. Okay? This is the mindset of the hopeful elect. Okay? Continuing on, verse 34, it says, And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob showing you once again that this is specifically for a seed line not every nation under the sun but the Israelites specifically okay it says and they shall be lords of it and I will increase them and they shall not be diminished and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power and they shall be my people and I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them this is a promise that is made to the Israelites and the Israelites only. Salvation is exclusive, not inclusive. Okay? And that's very important to remember. Let's get Revelation 13 and 10 just to bring that home. Please have upon precept. Revelation 13 and 10. And this is red letter. So these are the words of Yahweh Shai. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Okay? Or, or thir wait, wait, I, I meant 13 and 10. I'll read Revelation 3 and 10 because this is important also for the times we're coming in through the Spirit. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them. 
okay? All the globe, the entire world is going to be tried, okay, by this uh, time that's coming like never before. It says the hour of temptation. It says to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that word try, okay, uh, uh, is the root word, uh, the word try means uh, to test. It's the word parazo, to test. And the root word is para. Or the root word of parazo is para, which uh, means through the idea of piercing. So we're going, this hour of temptation is going to come and, try, and, and upon all the world to try us through the idea of piercing, okay? Which is what? The MOTB. But the hopeful elect are going to have this understanding not to take it. Which is important that this is coming out through the spirit because this is one prophecy that you can't afford to get wrong. But the point I wanted was in uh, Revelation 13 and 10 through the spirit. Okay, which goes on to say, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So it's, 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 it's no secret that the northern kingdom and southern kingdom went into captivity under the nation of Edom. And pursuant to this very scripture in, in Revelation, which is the New Testament, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, and so, so this means here's the patience and the faith of the saints. In order to be a saint, you have to be an Israelite because the very definition of saint means those that made a covenant with God by sacrifice. And the only nation to do that was the nation of Israelites. Okay, so the Israelites have this uh, coming. This is a future prophecy because this has not yet happened. And this is something that we're looking forward to. True recompense. Okay, fuck that 40 acres and a mule. We want to put our hands on our enemies. And pretty soon the Lord is going to allow that to happen. Okay, now I want to end this in Psalms 50. Psalms 50 verse 19. This will be our closing scripture through the Spirit. Psalms 50 verse 19, it says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue framed in deceit. Because that's what the, that's what devil goes into. It just means deceiver. It's not some red demon with a pitchfork and a, and a two-pronged tongue, okay, and, and, and burning in hell under the earth somewhere. No, devil just simply means deceiver. And Esau Edom has deceived the whole world. He is the perfect devil. Okay, per the perfectly cast nation to, to, to have that title of the wicked. Verse 20, it says, Thou sittest and speaking against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Because Esau and Edom, or, or because Esau and Jacob, so like Esau and Jacob were twin brothers. Okay? Verse 21, and here's the point. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though it says, Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So Esau Edom has been doing so much wickedness, okay, and so much iniquity that they figured in their mind that the Lord must be with them because they haven't been judged yet. But that's not the case. The Lord is saying, no, that's not the case. Okay, you 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 thought this manifest destiny was a was a, was a one way road, not realizing that it's a double edged sword, and you're going to have to pay for the things that you've done. And the Lord has all the receipts. That's why we're going to do unto you double. And you're going to drink the dregs of the cup of persecution before after a thousand years, you're finally destroyed through the spirit. Okay. And, and, and that's why great fear is falling upon our enemies. Scriptures say, but I will approve thee and set them in order before thine eyes. That's what's taking place now. With the members of the hopeful elect rising up in truth and sincerity and calling you out on your bullshit. Bringing, bringing your 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 uh, iniquity to light, okay? And the Lord is going to recompense us in due time, and we're living in the midst of those times now. And Lord willing, they soon come. So with that, I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach the thing of ours in truth and sincerity. This has been your brother Monatazak. Until the next lesson, shalom.